Philosophy, the ancient world, until before the year of 250 BCE. Hold faithfulness and sincerity as first principles. Confucius, ancient China, 551 to 479 BCE. For every culture in the world, the development of an ethic is essential as it is this that creates order and harmony. In many societies of the past, the idea of ethics, along with all other aspects of how the world works, was completely included within religion. China was no exception. However, throughout history, the so-called hundred schools of thought emerged. They were different philosophical currents developed in the country. One of the most important thinkers in this group is Confucius, who, through an analysis of his society, managed to develop a complete ethical system in all aspects, focusing on how relationships between people should be. Most of his thoughts are found in a collection of his writings and ideas called the Analects. So, let's explain his thoughts. As in almost every ancient culture in the world, in China, rulers justified their positions through the idea of divine right, meaning they made others believe they were specially chosen to lead them. Of course, this was related to the idea that rulers were more virtuous than others, but while having a virtuous ruler is important, Confucius believed that this is not enough for a society to function. Every member of society must also be virtuous. That is, Confucius believed that virtue was not an exclusive right of the powerful classes, but rather everyone could develop it freely. You see, for Confucius, what mattered was not having a high rank in society, but fulfilling your own role correctly, even if it seemed to be very small. Whatever a person's role, if they embrace it fully, they will become a junzi, which we can translate as superior person, in other words, the best version of oneself. This was a very revolutionary idea for the time, and we could say it would still be useful today, because it makes us understand that what makes a person worthy is not their power, but rather their values. However, life is not only about what we do, but also how that relates to others. We are social beings and inevitably coexist with others, so the best thing is to make the most of those relationships. Confucius understood this very well, so he tried to explain how these relationships should be. For Confucius, there were generally five main relationships in life. The first is the relationship between ruler and subject. Confucius considered that for this relationship to work correctly, the ruler must be benevolent and the subjects must be loyal. This, combined with the values of virtue, is an ideal way to prevent the ruler from abusing power and at the same time allow people to work with motivation. The second is the relationship between parents and children. According to Confucius, for this relationship to work correctly, parents must treat their children with affection and children must be obedient. If both are fulfilled, children can make the most of the education their parents give them, while parents can be proud of their children. The third is the relationship of a couple. For Confucius, in a happy couple, the husband must be good and fair, and the wife must be understanding. Of course, today we would say that both members should share a bit of both characteristics, not to mention that the definition of a couple is somewhat broader. But still, those values help make the relationship happy. The fourth relationship is the one between siblings. The relationship is more beneficial if older siblings are kind and younger siblings are respectful. This way, there can be a better understanding and tolerance so that the younger siblings follow the good steps of the older ones and are inspired by them. The last relationship is friendship. For Confucius, older friends should be considerate and young ones should be respectful. Of course, nowadays, in many cases, it is easy to forget who is older and who is younger, especially if the ages are very close. So this mainly applies in cases like when a friendship arises between a teacher and their students, or something similar. But again, in friendships of closer ages, we would say that if both have a bit of both characteristics, the friendship will work out very well. All these relationships are generally based on respecting the social position of the other person, whatever it may be, and valuing everything this person can offer. Confucius called this Xiao. Of course, this is an ideal case. Although difficult to achieve for Confucius, if society functioned this way, everyone would have more opportunities to develop fully. As we mentioned earlier, these relationships work if everyone develops virtue. Therefore, Confucius also tried to explain how to reach what he called Te. Something he always considered essential for the transmission of good costumes was culture. From the simplest aspects like how to greet people, to the most important actions like festivals and ancestor worship traditional in China. 
The reason he saw so much power in traditions was that he believed they could transform through example. Let's explain that. According to Confucius, when we do things sincerely, we are reflecting our inner self, so if we sincerely follow virtue, it means our own inner self has become virtuous. But not only that, obviously our actions affect others, so if those actions are done with virtue, they will positively affect others, helping them change for the better. Therefore, showing loyalty to others with sincerity is a way to transform the world for the better. This also helps us understand the value of Shang, which consists of knowing that we can learn from everyone and teach everyone. That means, if someone demonstrates virtue, we should learn from that person, but if they don't, we should guide them, and for that, it is important to recognize that we don't know everything, but we can always continue seeking virtue. From this, we can also mention two very important values in Confucianism, modesty and humility. For Confucius, they represent our true nature as human beings, so following them means being loyal to ourselves and sincere with our nature, being virtuous. And this, for Confucius, was the best humanity could do, because following traditional Chinese ideas, Confucius believed that heaven had chosen humans to unite the world through good behavior and virtue. Still, Confucius didn't express opinions regarding divine aspects. Although his intention was to convince the rulers of his time to govern righteously, it was very difficult to persuade them, so he dedicated himself to spreading ideas among the people throughout what was then China. Over time, his ideas became the basis of societies in several countries, such as Korea and Japan, and there are currently revivals of his ideas known as Neo-Confucianism. Perhaps many of his opinions can still be very useful for us to have a virtuous life in the 21st century. First, there must be order and harmony within your own mind. Then, this order will spread to your family, then to the community, and finally to the entire kingdom. Only then can you have peace and harmony. If you enjoyed the explanation we presented in this video, we invite you to discover some more of our content produced by Canic Time. In case there's any doubt, clarification, or topic proposal, we remain at your service. Please feel free to leave your comments, like the video, and subscribe.